Hey, it's Jason from Bohemia Bees, and we are out in the uh, apiary today working on uh, colonies, doing some uh, fall treatments and uh, inspections and some feeding. And hey, who's that? Who's coming in? Oh, shoot. That's the state inspector. What are we going to do now? Well, the state apiarist, apiarist, how do you say that? Apiarist. Apiarist. The state apiarist, Sybil Preston, mm -hmm. from Maryland, is here. And at first, most of you would think, hey, uh-oh, Jason's in trouble. What did he do now, <laughs> right? But that's not the case. I'm here to put your mind at ease and say that it's always good to have a good partnership with your state apiarist because with your bees and your keeping bees, whether it's one colony 50 colonies or 500 colonies, having that partnership and relationship is important for many reasons. Sybil, why don't you tell us one or two reasons why it's important to have a good partnership with your state apiarist? Well, one, here in Maryland, um, registration is required by law, um, and but there are no fees involved. So uh, registering is free, um, required, like free. and then you get um, all of our free services. Right. So all my education, all uh, the education and knowledge from my inspectors, uh, if you get one of my inspectors to come out uh, and help in education in beekeeping is yeah. key. Absolutely. You know, in a lot of my, my videos I do on the channel, I talk about having, you know, many different hive tools, but having many different resources, right? So whether you're reading a book or whether you're watching a YouTube video or whether you're going to a class or a course on beekeeping, it's always good to have various inputs so that people can learn and grow because we're always learning about the bees. We're never an expert. Um, but we always got to continue to tap those resources like your state apiarist to come out and help you. So it's not a bad thing that she's here. Um, she's going to help us work on uh, doing some testing today. And we're going to talk a little bit about that. All right. So Sybil's going to talk to us a little bit about the program and why she's visiting Bohemia Apiary today and what she's going to do to help do a couple tests on our bee colonies uh, for a lot of reasons. Uh, Sybil, what are we going to be doing today? We're going to be taking samples for the National Honey Bee Survey. Okay. So we will be taking a quarter cup of bees. We'll, we'll take a frame of brood from the colony, open brood with nurse bees. Um, we're going to shake the bees into the bucket here. Okay. Um, we'll get the bees here. We'll take a quarter cup of bees and they will go in my live box. There is fondant and a water sponge in here so that they stay alive. We will also take a quarter cup of the bees and we will put them in an alcohol um, bottle. And then all of these will be, that those will be shipped to the University of Maryland. We'll take that brood frame that we took the bees off of and we're gonna bump it into this pan. Okay. Uh, and that will be to look for one, Varroa will pop out, larva will pop out, possibly pupa. And then we're off, this specific is looking for Varroa numbers in the brood nest and AAA laps if it were present. Hopefully it's not, but that's, that's why they do the bump test. Awesome. Well, Sybil, I think we're going to get started here. We'll do a little bit of video of so doing some of the testing. This program is, is a great program that you can participate in. Just contact your state apiarist. Um, I contacted Sybil, or Sybil contacted me actually when she came out and did inspections earlier this year and said, Hey, Jason, can I come out and do some of the... Uh, the testing. I said, absolutely. Um, again, creating that part. It's a free test um, that they do and it's helpful uh, across uh, your apiaries. Anything else you want to add real quick? Let's, guess let's we get, get started. Let's get started. Here we go. So, um, we're going to smoke the colony a little bit. We're going to go in and look for that frame of brood. And um, the hardest part is making sure we find a good frame of open brood and that the queen is not on it. So we will take several minutes to stop 
um, and, and clear the, the frame of the queen before we utilize it for sampling. Excellent. All right, here we go. See another reason why I love these screen, screen inner covers. Other than we have ants in the back. Okay, you're good. So we're looking for a frame with open larva. Um, I specifically like to take the frames that have the older larva um, and not the eggs, uh, younger larva with eggs, because I don't want to displace eggs, especially this time of year um, when they are, are, are laying their winter bees. Mm -hmm. Looks like you found a drone, uh, late drone there. A late Still. drone, and I'm looking under his abdomen. And let's see if I can roll him. There we go. And I don't see any Varroa. Which is a good sign. Under there. So we're going to look for the queen and make sure she's not on here. Awesome. Seriously, what is with the drones? I know. That's crazy. So we've got live bees in the box. Bye, have fun. <laughs> Wash bees up here. And then you're gonna do a frame shake. That honey's free, by the way, you can take that with you. <laughs> Some is gonna pop out, know, yeah, unfortunately. I think I'm gonna irritate the bees on this. As much as you thought, right? It's a little harder when you do it on the ground. It's not a hard surface. And I'm going to try it, up on the table up here. Bounce. take the box of live bees and try to get everybody all the hitchhikers off and um, I like to put a Maryland sticker and we have to pull the cardboard out put a sticker on so that we keep any excess bees from exiting and then they send you a label that's ready to go so I can take these girls to the post office I will tape them up the tape is in the front of my truck and that is ready for the post office so friend. live bees we've got our live bees live great bees. how many bees do you think are in there just a guess um ten dollars worth ten dollars worth hey 35 45 <laughs> got it that's how much it costs to send is ten dollars oh ten dollars worth of bees all that is free so there we go I don't, you know. there we go okay so then they send you a um cloth and we take our and then it also at the end of the sampling everything when I get home everything gets washed and sanitized so that all there's no transfer nothing else from from place to place gets transferred right so we put the cloth in
then we put, I put water um, on the larva want to wash out one if any honey was in the pan and to give us some so I put water in here and we're gonna just kind of rinse the pan of all the larva and the varroa and the pupa and whatnot there's a little that are stuck to the bottom we're gonna try to make sure nothing sticks to my fingers because I don't want to skew any numbers so we put that down and then we're gonna gently do a swirl and it's going to go into the cloth. And I do a couple rinses to make sure we get everything out. Sybil, so, well, this seems like a very easy process to do. It is. And uh, not as invasive as I thought it was going to be, so that's awesome. No, it's quick and painless. Um, you know, we can, we can usually get the samples one brood frame um it's very quick fairly quick to find a one brood frame especially without any honey supers on mm -hmm. and um and get the bees closed back up and then again what we're looking for not we are looking for but the university would be looking for is any varroa um and then that is all the debris that came off of those bumps of the, the when we bumped the pan okay and the larva and the pupa and then i'm going to wrap this up and put this in a bottle of alcohol. And that's the end of the sample, that's it. Awesome. Yes, and then we have, the, we take the larva and then we put them in this. And your your sample number, you have a specific sample number. Awesome. And then all of this goes in the bag and uh, this bag here. And then these are go in my refrigerator at home and when all the samples are done, it's 24 samples for the state of Maryland, um, I box them up and send them at the end of the season. Because awesome. these can wait. So these, okay. will, these will probably go in the mail in the next week. Awesome. I'll be finished up. All right, folks, so there you have it. So you see uh, the apiarist has done her job here today in trying to help get more information about apiaries in Maryland and about bees. Um, bees beekeeping is more than just keeping bees for honey right it's a science it's a science that we all have to be able to participate in um, and much like the colony requires all the worker bees to do their job all of us have to do our job and our part and partner together with your state apiarist and others and not to sound too cliche but it's really kind of important to keep the bees alive right there's a lot of things that we have to be concerned about whether it's afb efb varroa mites and all the diseases and pathogens that they bring along um, shoot even small hive beetles we've seen on a couple discussions where potentially small hive beetles are transmitting i don't know that to be a fact but th there's definitely a concern if we continue to monitor your colonies you know inspect your colonies contact your state apiarist have them come out do inspections and participate in this survey because the survey is a great survey to get a good information back to the uh, colonies and back to the, the beekeepers in Maryland and across the country to really learn how to be better beekeepers. Well, thanks for watching everyone. I appreciate it. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Say bye, press or Sybil. I said press and see me. Bye, Sybil. Right? <laughs> Sybil's gonna be getting uh, things packed up because she's got another stop probably on the way back. She does this pretty much full time. So uh, make sure you uh you uh, send uh, some, some thanks along to your state apiarist. It's not a job that maybe a lot of people want to do, but Sybil loves it, and she does a lot of other things with her dogs. Uh, she'll bring them probably out here in the wintertime to, to sense for AFB. That's, I'll put a link in the description below because I think there's a video online about her dogs and what they do here and how unique they are in Maryland. So she loves her dogs, and we love, we love her dogs too because they help us out as beekeepers. Thanks for watching, everyone. Until next time, remember here at Bohemia Apiary, beekeeping is definitely more than a hobby. It's an obscession, it Sybil. Is. It's, it's definitely, a it's a sickness. <laughs> Thanks for watching everyone.